Greetings everybody, this is Sabin Dimitrov aka A Dance for the Astral Wolf and I wanted to come to you guys with a uh, with another uh, fun little v video of the walkthrough. Now I began doing these videos uh, when in the Casa 10 event we were uh, in but now we are going to be showing I'm going to be showing you guys the main uh, sc uh, map screen of um, of uh, um, your home world and this is our world map and there's a thing called a star map so you see you see this little one right down here well I just clicked on it and what happens is that uh, when you hit the star map you can see all the different servers all the different planets all these different little ones are out here now I was on server 780 although I am not sure if that is still a thing 780 might have been assimilated because I do not see uh, any triple digit worlds so I am starting to think I should know. Oh, here we are, 780. There we go. All right. They, I forgot that they were right next to us. So yeah. So this is uh, my old world. Wow. Um, it turns out EXE is still actually a thing. I I'm, I remember TWZ. I remember uh, EXS. And if I remember right, AFO is right here. Ha ha. I remember AFO. That was my old guild that I fought in when I was, uh, when I first met GRM. I remember MIB. I remember RUB. RUB used to be the most annoying people to fight because they would always do this, like, with these weird tactics of jumping in, hitting you, and then running away. And like, it was just annoying. And DRE, DRE used to be the most annoying guild ever. Like, I don't know what it is about DRE, but they used to be like, just abysmal to fight. That is so strange. But uh, yeah, um, there's EXS. Uh, let's see, EXE owns this one. So apparently EXE is actually still a thing. Oh, I, I remember Bob. I always thought that that was the funniest guild. Mr. Bob. Boberoni. The Bobster. I don't remember D&D &D, though. Yeah, I, I've been gone from the server for a couple of years, for like about a year now. I do remember PPP. Um, and Hyro, if I remember right, was the, uh, the guild leader of, uh, PPP. He was actually a pretty big arc. Now, last time I saw him, he was like 250k. Oh, I remember WFT. I did not like that guild very much. Uh, those guys were kind of annoying, annoying to deal with. Uh... DEA was actually a guild I was in for a little while. I led a couple guilds, but they all kind of kind of dried up, which was kind of a, a frustrating, but whatever. Let's see. I don't remember TWI. Oh, I, I definitely remember WAI. WAI was one of our allies. And uh, I will AFO, EXE, TWP, and... Uh, SSK were alt guilds, our main guilds, uh, fort guilds. We had a uneasy alliance with PPP. Wow, that takes me back. Wow. Fascinating. But yeah, so it, it's kind of fun just looking around this little planet after a year and just see how things are going. 
So strange, huh? I wonder how big I would be if I ever came back to this planet. So strange, huh? Anyway, but yeah, so now we are back on, on our planet. Sorry guys, I kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but... So yeah, you see, our main world has beautiful ice in the center of Kassatan. Oh, I mean, of the, of the uh, Sintisen. And then you see there's water. And then the ground is regular, and then there's water. It's not lava. And then going back here, the um, the ground is a lot better and doesn't look all war torn. And then if we if we go to do the world map, you have seven zones. So you have uh, area seventeen. You have Oda Tech. You have Zen Town. You have Tiberia. You have Umuziland. And then, so let's see, that was a one, two, three, four, five, and then six and seven. Then you have Tsentasen and Satuni. And those are the seven areas. Now, the reason why these are on fire is because they, they are open for battle. And what happens in these capital battles is... Uh, if you if you click on this bad boy right here, it, you will see that uh, that one one of my friends has a small Rogers in uh, um, in uh, the capital because what will happen is that he will get a notification if he's hit, and that means he can hop back on and kick out anyone that thinks that it's okay to kind of mess with us. Now STL is a uneasy alliance, if I remember right. So they don't they don't usually try any shenanigans, but yeah. Uh, so uh, as you guys can see, uh, we have thirty one minutes and fifty two seconds left before we get to close this capital. And closing the capital means we get to stay, keep, get to uh, keep it for an, an allotted time period. Uh, uninterrupted until the enemy can attack again when the timer re resets and uh, yeah and uh, that is perfectly fine but the thing that you really really want to want to be careful about is uh, Sentison because what happens is that if Sentison is taken over that means uh, uh, that guild gets to do whatever they want with the planet and here I'll show you so it's currently protected. And it says during this time no one can challenge the wonder. Occupies sorry, occupiers of the wonder can send reinforcements in advance to prepare for battle. The battle. Oh gee what a cruise. Hold, hold on a second. Okay. For this uh, battle, players on the server who have joined a, a guild as well as the original occupier of the wonder can donate soldiers to the wonder. Note, only one troop is permitted per player. Losing too many times, 60 out of 80 will gain an attack limit, and his guild cannot attack for 15 minutes. After the 12 hours battle countdown, if the current defender is not defeated, in 4 hours the battle will end and his guild will become owner of the wonder. Otherwise, the guild will continue. the battle will continue until there is a defender. Who remains undefeated for four consecutive hours. After that, the wonder will be protected again. Details of the outcome will be sent as battle reports to both sides of the battle. And as you guys can see, I can't go in there. But, uh, as you guys can see, we get a lot of extra benefits. So you see, uh, each capital has their own set of benefits. Wonder battle buffs. Improve attack by 10%, improve defense by 10%, improve cash production by 10%. Uh, we have low regional tax because we want to be able to help our players and other players grow. And then a uh, special guild product is uh, Shadow Matter, 3-day protection shield, and 24-hour protection shield. And then if we go over to Satuni... 
you will see uh, battle reports or uh, battle buffs or improved dodge rate by 5%, improved electric production by 5%, three day resource, uh, these are the, uh, the, the guild products, three day resource production and shadow matter. And then over here on Zen Town, you will have, that this one doesn't tell you because we're currently fighting for it. So we're gonna have to have to go that one a little bit later. <laughs> So we have uh, for the for the uh, guild products shadow matter and twenty four hour VIP privilege, improved attack by five percent, improved food production by five percent. Then we go to area seventeen, and then we have for the top shadow matter and marching speed plus fifty. Those speed ups are really really freaking nice. And then for the battle buffs we have improved defense by 5% and improved part production by 5%. Then we go over to Umu Zealand. And Umu, uh, Umu Zealand is, uh, the, the products are Shadow Matter and Marching Speed 75%. Those 75 percenters are really good when you're trying to get somewhere quick. And then the, the battle buffs are the improved accuracy by 5% and improved part production by 5%. Then we go to Tiberia. Tiberia is Shadow Matter and Random Warp for the guild products, and then the battle buffs are Improved Critical Rate by 5%, and Improved ca uh, Gas Production by 5%. But yeah, as you guys can see, uh, you will see uh, all these capitals on there. And so you guys see these little glowing speckles on the map? You know, these three little sparkles? If you click on those, that means you are taken to an area, which is a uh, unstable area. And if I say if if I want to go here, and I ooh, dang it, if I want to go to any of these ones, uh, let's see if there's like one that's closer. There we are. Oh, whoops! No, I, I didn't want to do that. Shoot. Uh, darn it. Uh, let's see, uh, so there is a, uh, um, so pretty much what, what, what these little zones are. I wanted to show you guys it, but, wait, let me see if we have it in a world map. Okay, here we are. Uh, give me a quick second, guys, and, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, how do I do this? Give me a, uh, a quick second, guys. Eh. Where's the where does the stupid thing go? Here we are. Like I said, be right back. Uh yeah. So we are at the uh Ark of War uh capital stuff. And this is quite simple. Ooh, gee what occurs. What is a capital? The capital is a really huge city in the air and a regional hub that is a total charge of daily uh operations and is its economic li uh, lifeline it is also the regional core to uh, to occupy the capital is to control that territory and glory and su supplies and the sea follow thereafter wow that's tiny so that doesn't really give you much more besides that um Oh, here we are. My apologies, guys. I'm. I promise you, I'm not stupid. I'm. I'm a little tired. So here we are. So you guys see this little resource enriched area? This little little thing right here. Uh, so if we go to this and we hit this little exclamation mark, the game will tell you. Resource enriched areas are widely distributed on the map. And they are pro uh, projected from a higher dimension into our 3D reality. It is the resource enriched area. Players resource uh, construction and production will. Sorry, players resource construction. Okay, that's annoying. Give me a second. So, so pretty much players resources, their production will double. Collection speed is also on resource tiles inside the resource enriched area will also be increased greatly. So not only will they be increased, but also what you what the um, so let us say that a level fifteen tile gives you one point two million resources. 
but in those hyper enhanced uh, glowing areas that I showed you that would be 2.4 million so they get doubled and the the uh, the resource uh, uh, extraction speed is also high higher so because of dimensional energy instability resource area um, areas uh, will change places every day so what happens is so they look a lot a lot look a lot like this these like weird little glowing hexagonal tiles on the map. So, uh, so pretty much, uh, what this, uh, so what this little little area does. Hold on a second, guys. Let me uh, quickly pause this again. Where is it? Stupid thing. All right. So, uh, pretty much, what? Um, sorry. Let me get let me get my thoughts back together. So pretty much what these li little zones are is, uh, let's say, uh, you know, we want well, we want to find a tile. So unfortunately, we don't see any resource tiles in this one, sadly. So we can just go to a different one and see if there's one one there. Here we are. So a level, so that's a level six. So a level six tile for electricity is 300,000, if I remember right. Yep, three hundred thousand. But a level six tile, uh, on um in this little area is hyper enhanced. So you guys can see that it's six hundred thousand. So and in this little area, uh, what happens is that if your arc gets attacked by an enemy and you lose, because of the instability of this area, your arc will automatically be warped. No matter how much your uh, arc durability is, so even if your arc only loses like maybe a hundred thousand durability, you will still be uh, jumped. So when it says your arc will be forced away, pretty much what the game does is that your arc will be put off of the map, so that way you won't be completely zeroed. Because that will cause players to quit. Now you may still lose a lot, but if you have a sufficient meat shield of tier one soldiers, I have eight point four million uh, rangers. I have fourteen point seven million uh, uh, yetis, and I have two hundred seventy three. No, sorry, I have twenty seven thousand uh, hummingbirds. And so tier 1 soldiers are the ones that get killed first. And then your higher tier soldiers later on if the enemy can kill your entire meat wall. And uh, so if I hit someone in that little area and they lose only maybe a, maybe like 100,000 uh, arc durability, they will still be jumped because of that. So if you ever lose a shield and for some weird reason you cannot log back into the game you can instruct your guild mates on the other social media that you talk to them on to kick your arc outside of the guild and then for them to hit you so that way the guild can keep the resources and they can force your arc off of the map so that way the enemy won't be able to find you and pretty much m murder you out of existence and then uh, what happens is that when you hop back on, a lot of the times your guildmates will give you back what they took um, to avoid the enemy plundering what they took. And in fact, sometimes guildmates will even give you more to help you recover and, uh, you know, build your soldiers back up. And uh, like I said, uh, usually, uh, so as you guys can see... Uh, Right now, my my medical center capacity is two uh, two point nine three seven million. So, if I really got mashed, I could select the holiday slay, and then I could also do the uh, eight hour advanced medical buff. And then what happens is that I am now at eighteen point three uh, three six zero. Sorry, eighteen million three hundred sixty thousand uh, medical center capacity. So that means p 
people would have to have to send a absolutely magnormous march against me to actually hurt me. And because my rangers would have to be hit hard first, I could hold all of my rangers in my arc if someone hit me. And that's actually really, really cool. Oh, only a hundred? Hmm. I guess that, that, that means I lost. No, I won this one. Oh, I see. Uh, this guy probably uh, killed me. I think it's the uh, the elf that probably did it. That's frustrating. But yeah, so um, so yeah, so uh, that's kind of a little little bit of a walkthrough of, of the of the of the, the main planet and kind of kind of just shows you guys how stuff works. Now, here's the thing. In the other world, you see how each zone is blo is uh, segregated by these little tiny yellow lines, these uh, little squiggly yellow lines, uh, pretty much. Uh, so, in st so in Kasatan event, you cannot jump over these yellow lines, but in uh, on your home world, you can attack any capital from anywhere on the map you don't have to have your your uh you don't have to have your guild fort uh you don't have to have your blue guild fort circle or the enemy doesn't have to have the red fort circle in the uh uh in the the area of the where they are trying to attack in kasatan event your guild has to move their fort around constantly to attack different targets. But because you are on your home world, you can fight anywhere you want, any uh, um, when you want, and how you want. Pretty much you have uh, complete freedom. And uh, yeah, so it's actually kind of cool. And uh, yeah, so that will, will allow you to be able to... Uh, um, what you call it? Uh, so that that means uh, you won't have to waste uh, fuel for your arc, jumping around in different places, and you can just send resources, send your soldiers over to garrison. Now, what happens is that if you garrison, you will break your your protection shield, and that is not good. So you always want to make sure that you are, are keeping an eye on your arc. You send. And then you use an eight-hour shield. Eight-hour shields are incredibly cheap. They are really easy to get, and it's a good way to uh, you know make sure you, you make sure you don't get blasted. Now another way that you can fight is that you use your arc skills, and the, you you have two of them. The first one is force field. You activate force field uh, arc force field, which means enemies cannot increase their march speed when attacking your arc. They can still scan you and they can still attack you, but you can't, you know, make a 10 minute march time go down to a couple seconds. It has to be 10 minutes. And then if you are attacking an enemy arc, exile. What this does is that activate and activate arc exile to strike it from the air after a seizing victory of the enemy arc. Pretty much it uh if I remember right, it makes it so so that way uh, the enemy is uh, bumped from your area. I remember asking about it a little while back, but I wasn't quite sure. And that's a problem that I was trying to figure out. So, um, let me see. What else is there to say? Mm -hmm. Oh. They must have. They, they must have added something new. Where's Mary? Mary, Mary, quite contrary. My gosh, that is quite the skin. Is that a dog? You see, that's one of the reasons why I hate Chihuahuas. They look exactly like this. What a little parasite my gosh that thing is hideous Ugh, that ew i yeah i i hate that with an unholy passion i don't think she has that little demon dog with her nope she doesn't 
Instead, she just has a huge effing hammer. But yeah, so, uh, yeesh. Ugh. Uh, yuck. <laughs> wow. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, let's see, uh, what else was I going to tell you guys? We already have all this. Oh! So, on the world map, uh, let's see. You guys see this, this little, little, little purple thing? And you guys see this, this little star thing? Though, uh, remember I told you guys, um, uh, on the, uh, the other, uh, ah, darn it. On the, um, on the other, uh, video, these little guild marks that you can add and that you can, uh, tap down, type down names for them. Well, they also pop up on the guild map. So you can see them on the guild map. So there is one attack. You see the, the, those little bullets. There's one to keep watch on, and then I say, "Hey, what's this?" You know. So, uh, well, no, I don't. I don't want to quit. Go away. And uh, yeah. So we hate DGS. We need DGS to be obliterated. So we have the fort to be hit. SNI is a cautionary fort. We aren't exactly really sure about them, so we just keep an eye on them, and then. We have uh, trust but verify. These bad boys right here. It's uh, STL. Uh, STL um, and our guild has a shaky relationships, uh, really relationship with each other. So we are just trying to uh, work that out and figure out what's going on. Unfortunately. Uh, STL, some of their players are kind of problematic, but other ones are just fine. And then the other ones are just kind of just kind of go with the flow. So we have a uneasy, but still trusting relationship with them. And we uh, just have to, you know, just trying to work things out with them. Remember, uh, it's not always your guild against everybody else. Oftentimes, you, you know how it says in ours, sister guilds. Sometimes guilds get so big, they have to have a secondary guild. Because you can only have 88 players at the current level that our guild is at. So, TWP and GRM are our two uh, guilds. And remember, uh, we used to be GRM and TWP. But then we became an ultra-active guild of all the top players in this, um, on our server in our top three guilds and became GWU. So we are Grim Wolves United, GWU. And then our allies are DX7, like always. No hit STL on server. So, and you know, STL tries to abide by that as well. And during Cathaton, no hits against BAD. We don't exactly like BAD, but they aren't exactly our enemy enemies. Now, Anywhere and everywhere, we hate DGS. We want them to be obliterated. Same with, with UWA and YUP. And uh, UWA and YUP are the sister and alt alternative account guilds. And uh, you pretty much want to murder them every chance you get. Uh, fight smart and fight careful, but pretty much don't give them a break. Now, I have actually had friends in enemy guilds before, and we've had a great time just talking to each other and having a good time. But that's kind of few and far between. But yeah, so, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, and because we are back on our home server, I want to do do a quick little, little uh, uh, you know, walkthrough of all these events uh, on my next video. But this one we just kind of needed to be like a quick little recap video on what the home world is like. So, uh, it, going over to this little sucker right here, uh, you guys will, will see that we got have everything from level one all the way to level twenty, and then for resource tiles, it's all level one. All the way to, to level 15. And then, uh, yep, they're all level 15s. Now remember, cash is always halved of the amount of other ones. So this is uh, 12, uh, this is 1.2 million, 6 million, 
No, sorry, uh, 600,000. 1,200, sorry, 1 1.2 million, 1.2 million, 1.2 million. So back on your home world, everything is much easier. But remember, guys, uh, healing soldiers is incredibly expensive. 9.82, no, sorry, 4.5 million for uh, to train your soldiers instead of being much cheaper. And to heal your soldiers, also incredibly expensive. So you always want to fight a lot more carefully when you are not in the Kasatan event. Because the Kasatan event is where your extra guild um, benefits and... Um, what you call it? Uh, guild benefits and uh, freaking... Um, tech research tech are uh, done so you don't have uh, things being uh, one-fourth the price that they usually are so you want to fight very carefully and you want to fight smartly and you want to fight uh, sparingly you don't want to send a big giant F in March against so let's pretend uh, like a monster. Where's a monster? Let's just find a monster. Here we are. So, you, you don't want to fight, you know, as someone with this. That, because if they have a bullet, or they have a reinhardent, or they have something that can counter high tier soldiers, you're effed. And you're going to lose a unholy amount of resources. And stuff, and pretty much uh, you're screwed. So, when you when you fight the enemy, you often want to do a commander that can still hold their own, but you want to have something that can defend them, that that can you know you won't lose so much to uh, you know fight. So I I ran my small Orochi, and uh, I don't know why people have some of the names that they do. But as you guys can see, look, uh, my Orochi is really freaking tiny. But we got to kill t uh, se uh, tier 7 soldiers with tier 2. So as you guys can see, they are huge. And they're hitting me, with, hitting me with some stuff. But as you guys can see, my Orochi, which has the right equipment and stuff, is fighting smart. And he has good skills that are developed. And that allows him to, to carve through the enemy without any trouble whatsoever. And level 6... Uh, level 6 enemies are the same as level 20 uh, monsters. And... The, and uh, now... And uh, usually you don't want to... Uh... uh do this unless you know you're gonna win and not lose any soldiers but yeah like uh you just want want to fight smart you want to know you know what to do but uh yeah i mean uh this is just kind of more game ethics how the game works what you should do how you fight smart and all that now uh as you guys can see bad or bad, they are just kind of parked here, just doing their own little stuff. But DGS, they are right next to us. They are right next to the capital, and they are going to do everything they can to take over our, our over our server, and that is a very bad thing. Uh, so you want to be very careful with that, and. Uh, Yeah, that's a little bit of a problem, and we don't want that. Now, um, just because an arc is a lower power level than you are, does not mean that they don't have a mean defense. Because a bullet commander can use rangers the weakest soldier in the game and absolutely devastate an entire row of tier 12 soldiers 
the strongest units in a game. Because if a... Uh, because uh, remember what, what, what I told you guys about the bullet? Uh, the bullet, which is right here. They have... Um, so uh, they have a thing called Ghost Cannon. And this is a 40% chance to trick when attacking. It deals damage to the target directly. The amount of damage is equal to 0.5% of the activator's health points. So that goes to 30%. And all that, that, that the bullet needs is a crap ton of, a ton of leadership. A F ton of leadership. And a health point and accuracy build. Uh, Light of Gemini, uh, a infantry abil um, uh, ability that guarantees a hit. Uh, Hydra head attack, that's another infantry if I remember right. Or like something, you know, interesting and unique. See? Hydra head attack. Uh, so this is actually kind of cool. Or, uh, uh, this you could also do acid jet. Acid jet's pretty nasty too. But yeah, you know, you could actually really hurt high tier soldiers because you're doing damage directly to their units. So you want to make sure that you are not going against a bullet that has extreme uh, health points because they're going to devastate your soldiers. You always want to counter bullets with Orochi or commanders that can self-heal and use low-tier soldiers. But yeah, so, yeah, you know, just um, on your home world, things are free-for-all. So you want to keep a constant eye on all your capitals and all the ones that you're trying to keep up with. Now, mind you, TWP and GRM are both our allies. And, uh... Sorry, guys. Um, pretty much, sometimes uh, servers are run by two guilds. So let's say GRM and TWP... Um. Uh, were were still the guilds that they were, and uh, GW GWU doesn't exist. For one week, Tiberia, Zen uh, Zentown, Satuni, and Umu Zealand could be GRMs, and then TWP would have Area Seventeen, uh, Sentison, and Ota Tech, and then maybe. The next week, they would swap, so that way other ones can get, you know, access to the different uh, materials and the benefits of each uh, of each capital. The point is to make sure that the other people do not get that uh, do, do just um, do not get those um, uh, what do you call it um, capitals. And, uh, like it is, you know, as long, I mean, so, your server can actually be run, uh, by people, uh, um, by, uh, by multiple guilds. And sometimes there are servers where, uh, what happens is that, uh, it is like a crap ton. So there are some servers out there which are completely rank based. So you have almost every guild on that server full of level like 200 million power and above people. And uh, they uh, are just, you know, money makers. They are people that spend thousands of dollars on the game every year. And it's pretty much, it's... Uh, it's a server that's completely built for people who hardball the game. Ah, there we go. And, uh, what happens is that with those, sometimes they will take turns running the planet. Because 
those top three or four guilds are trying to get into the highest level of, you know, gratis campaign or trying to get their server into the top places. So, uh, yeah, it's actually really kind of cool. And uh, sometimes uh, server-based... Uh, Ultra guilds, like guilds that span planets worth, will link all of their people together. So when Kasatan event comes up, they can absolutely devastate all other servers because they have a plan. So you don't know who you're going to be paired up with when you are in Kasatan event. So you always want to be extremely careful when you are dealing with that. But yeah, so I hope that the, you know that this video has been informative and kind of shows you guys insight on how everything works. Now this video is starting to get long, and I think in total it's going to be going to be forty minutes. So I need to end the video here. But hopefully this has been uh, what's that term? Uh, informational for you guys and i hope that this will help you guys kind of get a new insight of the game and uh yeah i really hope that you guys get to enjoy uh in the video and i hope that this will give you guys kind of more uh insight on how the game works and what people do anyway this has been sabin dimitrov aka a dense for the astro wolf and has been an absolute pleasure to uh to have you guys uh watch my video and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. This has been Spin Dimitrov, aka Dance for the Ass Wolf. You guys stay awesome and always remember, God bless.